No. There's another. Killed him. He turned them all. You don't understand. The Lord brought you back, and he brought me back. No one else, just us. Everyone wants to know how the Night King will be defeated. What happens to him? How does he die? If he dies, does he explode? There's tons of questions. Well, I have some answers for you. The Night King is a big pain in the ass right now, and he's threatening the lives of everyone south of the wall. But there's hope. If you missed my podcast with Tony, LML, and Quinn, Tony pointed out that Jon Snow will end the Night King in a one-on-one -on -one single combat duel. And he's the first person I heard theorize this and led me to digging. And I dug and we should talk about the tons and tons of evidence I managed to find to support this theory. So the theory is that Jon will fight the Night King and kill him in single combat. Uh, my mind would just explode all over the place. I, I actually do want to see Jon fight the Night King one-on-one. -on -one. But let's look at the evidence that supports this theory. Firstly, I want to expel one thing right away. There's all this hype about Dawn being Jon's sword, and Jon is going to wield Dawn, and Dawn is in the crypts of Winterfell, and Dawn and Dawn, and I mean, that's cool and all, but Longclaw is the only sword that matters. Yes, Dawn is magical, and it's made from a fallen star, and it's white like milk glass, but Dawn is the sword of Hal's Dane, and Jon is not a Dane, or a sword of the morning. Longclaw was literally Jon's destiny. He's already killed two White Walkers with it. It's Valyrian steel, and it's literally called a bastard sword or a hand and a half sword, which means it is a good half a foot longer than a standard long sword tapered to thrust as well as slash. Another sword in our story that is a bastard sword is Blackfire. Blackfire is the lost Valyrian steel sword of Aegon the Conqueror, and just so happens Jon's real name is Aegon, but let's keep moving. Jon has never wielded Dawn before, but he's had long claws since book one. Now, if you were going to play football or basketball or soccer or whatever sport you play, would you want shoes that you've broken in or would you want a brand new pair that you've never worn before? I mean, unless the spirit of every sort of the morning ever lives inside of Dawn, then I think Jon would fare better with Longclaw. He's trained with it, he's killed with it, he's used it. That's just my personal opinion. I also think when we take into account that Jon will duel the Night King in this one-on-one -on -one single combat thing, the history of Bear Island and House Mormont needs to be discussed. Bear Island is a long disputed island. The North and the Ironborn have fought over it for years. Legend says that Roderick Stark, King in the North, won Bear Island in a one-on-one -on -one wrestling match with an Ironborn King, and then he gave the island to House Mormont. The Valerian Steel Sword could have been there when the Mormonts moved in, but it's very odd that one of the poorest houses in Westeros, small but proud, has a priceless Valerian Steel Sword. This is Valerian Steel. My father's sword. His father before him. The Mormons have carried it for five centuries. But the fact that Bear Island was won in single combat or a wrestling match, single wrestling match combat, I don't know how you would say that. But that could be foreshadowing as to what John needs to do, which is single combat with the Night King. We know the Starks of Winterfell worship the old gods. Their way is the old way, and this is shown to us very early on. You understand why I did it? John said he was a deserter. But do you understand why I had to kill him? Our way is the old way. Now, there was some foreshadowing in season six for a one on one with John and the Night King, and John even referenced the old ways. You're right. There's no need for a battle. Thousands of men don't need to die. Only one of us. 
Let's end this the old way. You against me. This right here is priming us for John to challenge the Night King. I keep hearing stories about you, bastard. The way people in the North talk about you, you're the greatest swordsman who ever walked. Maybe you are that good. Maybe not. And if you think the Night King would say no, I don't know if I can beat you, but I know my army can beat yours, then you're wrong. Because in the books, as soon as we meet the White Walkers, they seem to keep the old ways as well, which may point to them having more than blood, but that's for another day. There are multiple White Walkers that surround Waymar Royce, but the challenge only comes from one of them. Sir Waymar met him bravely. Dance with me then. He lifted his sword high over his head, defiant. His hand trembled from the weight of it, or perhaps from the cold. Yet in that moment, Will thought he was a boy no longer, but a man of the Night's Watch. The other halted. Will saw his eyes, blue, deeper and bluer than any human eyes, a blue that burned like ice. They fixed on the longsword, trembling on high, Watch the moonlight running cold along the metal. For a heartbeat, he dared to hope. They emerged silently from the shadows, twins to the first, three of them, four, five. Sir Waymore may have felt that cold that came with them, but he never saw them, never heard them. Will had to call out. It was his duty and his death if he did. He shivered and hugged the tree and kept the silence. When the blades met, there was no ring of metal on metal, only a high, thin sound at the edge of hearing, like an animal screaming in pain. Royce checked the second blow and a third, then fell back a step. Another flurry of blows and he fell back again. Behind him, to the right, to the left, all around him, the watcher stood patient, faceless, silent, the shifting patterns of their delicate armor making them all but invisible in the wood yet they made no move to interfere. Waymar fights one of the White Walkers one-on-one, -on -one, and once he's basically lost, then they butcher him up. But the fact that they stood there silent and didn't interfere and let them duel makes me think that they practiced the old way. And this is very much a foreshadowing of what's to come. We saw at Hard Home on the show that the Night King watches John kill one of his commanders or lieutenants and he never makes a move to interfere. In season seven, the hive mind trope reared its ugly head. It's popular in sci-fi. Basically, if you kill the mothership, then the baby ships die. And that's what happened with this white walker. John killed him with long claw and every white he turned died. When you killed the white walker, almost all the dead that followed it fell. Maybe he was the one who turned them. That's why Beric says if you kill him, all these ice demons will die because he made them all. Which is more foreshadowing that John will duel with the Night King. There's also been some stare downs between John and the Night King that foreshadowed this as well. Firstly, we have Hardhome. They stare each other down twice. Then we have the Beyond the Wall episode, and John is basically showing off his sword skills, saying, Come get you some. One of the biggest pieces of evidence, in my opinion, lies with John's father, Rhaegar Targaryen. As a young boy, the Prince of Dragonstone was bookish to a fault. He was reading so early that men said Queen Rayella must have swallowed some books and a candle whilst he was in her womb. Rhaegar took no interest in the play of other children. The maesters were awed by his wits, but his father's knights would jest sourly that Baylor the Blessed had been born again. Until one day, Prince Rhaegar found something in his scrolls that changed him. No one knows what it might have been, only that the boy suddenly appeared early one morning in the yard as the knights were donning their steel. He walked up to Sir Willem Derry, the master at arms, and said, I will require sword and armor. It seems I must be a warrior. We know Rhaegar was obsessed with this prophecy and whatever he read sent him to the training yard to become a warrior. Something he had previously no interest in whatsoever. Maybe he read that the prince who was promised would have to engage in single combat with something greater than himself and he decided he better learn to fight. 
or maybe not. Who knows what he read, but he did believe he was the prince who was promised, and that belief did not change until a red comet appeared over King's Landing on the night of Aegon's conception. After that, he thought the prophecy lied within his children. The last piece of evidence is a show kind of technical thing, but for me, it's kind of important and like the most telling evidence we have that there will be some kind of single combat between Jon and the Night King. And that has to do with the change in casting of the Night King. In season four and five, the Night King was portrayed by Richard Brake. And I must admit, he's a lot creepier than the man who plays the Night King now, which is Vladimir Furtick. Now, if you look this actor up, the new guy that plays the Night King, Vladimir Burke, you will see an extensive, and I mean extensive, resume in stunt work, which could mean he's going to have some serious one-on-one -on -one combat battle stunt work coming up in season eight. And that's why they change the actor. Game of Thrones likes to cast characters that are good at the shit they need to do and they want them to be good at that shit in real life. Like for example, when they casted Arthur Dane, the casting called read like this. A man in his 30s or 40s who is a great swordsman and a paragon of knighthood. He carries a hugely famous sword on his back. The show is seeking a very impressive swordsman for the role, the best in Europe. For a week of filming, fight scenes for season six role. The show wanted the best freaking swordsman in Europe to play Sir Arthur Dane. And after season five, it seems they have casted one of the best stuntmen to play the Night King. Now, Furtick has worked on shit from Skyfall to Spartacus, like his resume is extensive. But as of yet, we haven't seen the Night King do too many stunts, like nothing that would require a stuntman of this magnitude to be casted into this role. Unless the Night King is going to fight a one-on-one -on -one battle with Jon Snow in season eight, and it's gonna be jam-packed full of stunts. What do you guys think? Like I, I this like this is what I want to happen. I want this to happen. I want Jon Snow and the Night King to fight one on one. But what do you think? Will Jon Snow fight the Night King in a one on one battle? Do you think that's what's been foreshadowed for us so far? And if that's not what you think, what do you think will happen? As always, thanks for watching. Thanks to everyone that supports me on Patreon. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please click that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and join the Sweet Summer family. Okay, my sweet summer children. Have a good day. Shame.